Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Scott Ramp. And I'm also your host, Noelle McFoy. That was Asaf Adonai on piano. Asaf, what song was that? That is a song called The Cattle Call. Oh, nice. I love that. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> I like in the morning, we're just like, okay, and stroke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have guests on today. We have um, Betsy and we have uh, Harold. Uh -huh. from um, the Jeanette Rankin, Jeanette Rankin Peace Center, and they're here to talk about a unconference, a little nice little roundtable panel discussion with guests from across the community and beyond to yeah. talk about all sorts of wonderful things that they'll talk about when they come on our When show. they come up. We also yeah. have Forrest and Christian here, and they are two guys from the Hellgate Roller Derby, and so they're going to tell us all about what it's like to be men playing on the Hellgate Roller Girls League. Or should I say Hellgate Roller Guys. Hell get ruler guys. Yes. I don't know. <laughs> I'm so funny. Anyway, <laughs> You're so great, you know what's guy. not funny? Uh, actually, it's great now. Actually, it's not funny. <laughs> it's not sad, but it's 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 pretty good because the, the weather. It's the weather. It's the weather. Oh, oh. Okay. Yes, it's yeah. going to be. Uh, it's 52 degrees outside currently, so it's a, it, was, it started off as a nice warming, a nice uh, warm morning. Warm <laughs> warming. Morning. Yeah, that's a new word now. Uh, so. <laughs> Uh, the high is going to be 75, the low is going to be uh, 49, and of course Saturday you can we're going to see things reach into the 80s and maybe by the end of the weekend towards your next work week you can see in the, to the 90s. Yes. And so. usually after Memorial Day everything starts heating up, the rain pretty much stops. Yesterday it kind of rained, it but it was rain. okay. It was nice and cool. And it, it was yesterday. the first week of the out to lunch and... Um, yeah, downtown, downtown tonight. tonight. And so Scott got to go to downtown tonight. How was it, Scott? Uh, they, I think they should have a better name, but other than that, um, it was I good. Was, I always call it like dinner in the park. Yeah, everyone calls it dinner in the park. I always make my own name. Oh, you want to go to dinner park? It was like, huh? Where? It was like, it's it's called downtown tonight. It is. Uh, it's like, uh, well, I don't. Well, think you know, I downtown mean. is every night. Yeah, I go downtown every night, so it's dinner <laughs> in the park for me. I'm downtown every single day. Every night. Every twenty four seven because I live downtown. Yeah, you do. Yes, I do. It's nice <laughs> to get to work. I was just like, I'm walking to work. But I actually drove this morning. Weird. But uh, Scott really walks like this. I, like this. I, 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 I walk like now. this a lot. <laughs> I walk like that. But yeah, um, we uh, it is Friday, and we it have is. the flagship Friday video of the week. Okay. Oh, uh, starring the kids from CS Porter, and, they're, and we're gonna have that video later on today's show. We have events, and um, Asaf is talking about a very uh, famous, famous cartoon rabbit. live action movie, Rabbit Woman. Yeah, but <laughs> it's also first Friday, you guys. So I'll have all of your events for music and art that's going to be going on in your Missoula, in your community today. But of course, if yeah. you want to learn more information about Wake Up Missoula, you can log on to our website wakeupmissoula.wix.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice, we made you write it out twice. And I'm too cheap to buy the license to wakeupmissoula.com. Guys, guys. <laughs> and on. you can also like us on Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter at Wake Up Missoula. Missoula Community Access Television also has a Twitter at MCAT TV Missoula. You can like us on Facebook and to find out more information go to MCAT.org. Yes, and of course I, I have to plug this. Um, our summer camps are uh, coming up really close and we're still looking for spots and it's like uh, I would say it's two weeks from Monday. Uh, no, no, it's, yeah, last it's two weeks from Monday because we're, we're taking a next week off from Wake Up Missoula. We are, yes. So, th so the sixth and the first week starts on the 20th. So we're about two and a half weeks off from our very first uh, wildlife film camp. So if there's any kids out there watching right now, apparently, <laughs> or parents of those kids said watching our said show, therefore, you guys should check out our uh, uh, summer camp program. It's, it's great. pretty fun. It's Sky nice, uh, one to five the whole week. Yep. And by then you'll be like, uh, Get out of the house. I don't want you here. Like to the kids. It's and so our fun. first camp is our a wildlife filmmaking camp where we go out to different parks and we'll go out to Kate Davis's Raptors of the Rockies and we will film wildlife and learn all about animals. And, and it's pretty fun. And then of course we have our secondary um, animation camp, which is um, let's see. It's July eighteenth through the twenty second. That's our second animation. Our first animation got filled up. But we already had we still have room for our second animation camp. Our animation camp usually is the most popular one of all. There's a lot of kids that really sign mm -hmm. up for it. One of the first one's full. The one that happens the week before, which is on the 11th. But of course, this one is going to be 18th through the 22nd. So that's that's just me pandering, just saying, hey, come on, we need um, people to get involved, learn some stop animation, learn claymation, do some voiceover work, and you know, learn some cool little nice little tricks on um, here at MCAT. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Yep, yeah, but of course, you can do that pretty much anytime because our orientation is next Wednesday. 
at 5.30. So if you're interested in getting involved with MCAT, you want to make a movie, you want to be part of making a movie, you want to be in a studio, um, take pictures, take video, kind of like what we're doing here today, and um, just do whatever. And we can help you with anything whatsoever, because I've helped like all arrays of different types of people. Some people who just come here and they're just like, hey, I need to do like a presentation on something or whatever. It's like, oh, okay. And then I, I figured it out and I still, and I was able to help them. <laughs> I was like, thanks for all your help. It's like, I don't know what I did. I kind of like uh, BS my way through it. <laughs> You did a great job, Scott. I don't know. You don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. But we do have guests waiting, so let's go to some new programming. Yes, uh, we do have some programming. And, of course, I do want to show you this clip. And I want to give, give you a taste of this. This is the uh, Democrats meeting. Democrats meeting. They have a monthly meeting at the... Uh, uh, city Council Chambers, mm -hmm. and this is uh, kind of like they're having a Q&A with uh, the candidates for the county commissioners, and this is the Democratic county commissioners. Awesome. Um, so this is uh, Stacey Rye and um, Dave Strohmeyer, and they're answering a question. So here is a little taste of who you guys may or may not be voting for this uh, coming election. And it's not known to be the most liberal and progressive organization in the state. You can imagine how three female county commissioners are viewed. Um, and we were in this training, we were talking about human resources, and something came to my mind, and I thought, there's no reason, if the, if the federal government isn't going to move on this, there's no reason that Missoula County can't start setting a precedent. And so I came back, and I asked our HR person, who is fabulous, and I said, why wouldn't we be able to do something like paid parental leave for new moms and dads, even if they're you know, adoptive parents, foster parents? And her head almost exploded, and then she calmed down. And um, she and I took that through the process. And so now Missoula County staff, 850 of them, have paid six weeks of paid parental leave so that they don't have to starve to death and have to make a choice between taking care of a newborn and going back to work, which is an excruciating decision that so many parents, particularly mothers, have to do. And we're one of, and I think it, we're it. We're the only country left in the, in the advanced world that doesn't have that. And so I'm so happy that Missoula County is now, I think we've set the precedent for Missoula, or for Montana. Well, I'm pretty happy to have been with my son when he got his first turkey a couple of weeks ago. That was exciting. But uh, uh, what else am I proud of in particular? Uh, in the not-too-distant past, I traveled to Washington, D.C. with a contingent of Northern Plains Resource Council members and Western Organization of Resource Council members. And we lobbied members of Congress and the administration to do a full environmental analysis of what these stinking coal trains might be doing as they travel along through southern Montana between uh, the Powder River Basin and proposed... Hey, we're here with uh, Betsy Mulligan Day, and we're also here with Harold. Uh, sorry, what, what should, should... Shinsato. 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 That's awesome. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I say. Thank you. We're not here to talk about their, your awesome names. We're here to talk about uh, the Jeanette Rankin Peace Center, and you guys are hosting a, an event that's coming up uh, June 11th, I believe. June 11th, that's yes, right. So. And so tell us about this. Well, this is, we're celebrating our 30th year in Missoula as a peace center, resource center. And so our conference, we're putting on a conference, the second one that we've done, it's called Roots and Wings. How will you take radical responsibility for a better world? And it comes from the idea that we have been the root of peace in the community and the wings are uh, our um, desire to sort of get people engaged and carrying peace like wings out into the community and various initiatives of things that they're passionate about and actions that they want to take to make the world a better place. So um, this is our poster here about the event. It's on June 11th at the University Congregational Church from 8.30 until 5.30. And we're hoping to have all sorts of people there, not you know, not just people that are in the Peace Center um, community, but lots of folks here so that we can get lots of different perspectives because that's, that's where you get the rich idea generation and um, community building, so. Yeah, so what can people expect, expect from this? Well, it's uh, open space technology, which is a very exciting thing, and I'm going to let, Harold's going to facilitate that at the meeting, so I'll let him talk about that. Well, open space technology was developed by someone who had done a just a traditional conference for our community of uh, practitioners of improving organizations. And uh, 
the after he did spend over a year working on the event, scheduling the speakers, setting up the venues, doing the tracks, people said, oh, it was a good conference, but the best part were the coffee breaks, and that's the one thing he had nothing to do with. Mm. So he, he was thinking about this, and the legend is, the way he says it, at the bottom of second martini, he thought of his work with the Peace Corps, where people met in a circle whenever they had anything to work out on in the community. And for them to meet together and talk about things, they would put thing, you could put things up on a bulletin board. And so that's what he combined it. He worked it out with, uh, with that. So anyone can stand up in the center of the circle and invite to uh, investigate or dialogue about any question at all, or you can even work on things. Cool. People have done software projects this way. And so it's just a great way for people to stand up and work on something, invite other people to work with them on anything at all. Oh, interesting. But so it's going to be kind of like an, so it's going to be like a circle of people and then people can get up and talk about any issues that they think feel yeah. fit in with the theme. That's so wonderful. Yeah. yeah. But of course, there are going to be a couple people who are uh, speaking up beforehand as well because you have a list of uh, guests who are right. speaking. Right. We do have some, we call them lightning keynote speakers because they're just really quick. Uh, thoughtful, inspiring um, speakers to just get people's juices flowing, get ideas and inspiration going. So we have Patrick Weaselhead, who's our 2016 peacemaker and a wonderful uh, university professor retired, and uh, Amy Sillenberg from Climate Smart Missoula and her daughter, who uh, is part of a group of young girls called Saving Our Amazing Planet. They do a bunch of fundraisers. So sort of that epitome of the wings, you know, the nice. next generation taking over. Also, we have Rain Smith, uh, who's a wonderful poet and activist in town, and um, then Josh Schlotnick, of course, everybody knows uh, from the Peas Farm in Garden City Harvest, a great activist. That's so, awesome. Um, yeah. Just uh, where can people find more information? They can go to www.jrpc.org. We have more information there. Take you to the website for this event and the way to register. It's free for members, $20 for people who are not members of the Peace Center. Mm -hmm. um, but it includes breakfast, snacks, lunch, and then we have this wonderful celebration at the end of the day in the courtyard at UCC. We have cake and wine and snacks to celebrate the 30th anniversary of the Peace Center. And Lawrence Duncan. Music by. Yeah. Lawrence yes. Duncan is going to play for us. So what time does it start? 8.30 in the morning. Okay. And then it ends at? It ends at 5.30 okay. and then we'll go to the courtyard and Lawrence will play and we'll just enjoy some birthday cake. Is there anything else you want to say about this event? Um, you know, we had several people last year who still are very excited about about this year's event because they came and they, they met some people, they started networking, uh, working on some things together, so we just encourage anybody who has an idea of what we need to do to make the world better to come and, and network and meet some people. And Can they show up any time throughout the day? Um, it's best if they're there for the start and hold. Oh, they can come. We're not they can turn come at away. No, they can come at any time during the day. It it just helps to know what how to work it if because yeah. we give a little instruction at the beginning. But I've seen people come uh, even less than the first part of the morning or less than the second part of the afternoon or just in the middle and contribute amazingly and. So yeah, you don't need to be there the whole day. But another cool thing is because it's open space format, mm -hmm. you can really interact with these speakers because mm -hmm. they're going to be participating in the open space. They might come to a session you you host, or they may host sessions. So it's very dynamic. Very cool. Well, thanks, uh, thanks for joining us, guys. Um, Saturday, June uh, June eleventh, from uh, eight thirty to five um, at the um, University Congressional Church. You guys can check out uh, Roots and Wings, yeah. the Jean hosted by the Jeanette Rankin Peace uh, Center, and they're uh, going to be hosting a nice little event, nice little yeah. roundtable discussion with a uh, nice uh, little lightning keynote speakers, yep. and, and it's going to be great. You guys could check it out. And if they don't come to the conference, they can still come to the birthday party. Public's welcome to help us celebrate thirty years of peacemaking in the world. Congratulations, you guys. Yeah. Thank you. Free cake. Yeah. Bernice's cake. Yeah. Yes. Gluten free, too. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks, guys. <laughs> we'll be back after this. Hey, who will explain the importance of the library, this vital community resource, and why it is so important to the community, to Missoulians. Rita Henkel, Chair of the Library Board of Trustees, if you'd start us off. 
We also learned that the library is about a third of the size that it should be to provide services to a town this size. We are the busiest library in the state. Roughly 1,500 people walk through the library every day. And yet on the main floor where our collections are, the Children's Center is housed and all the reading materials are shelved. There are only 38 spaces to sit. The thing that really slows us down when we travel is that we cannot spend more than a few hours in any city in America or any small town in Montana without going to the local library. I cannot help myself. We always find some needed information or local history there. And so here is our observation from visiting dozens of communities. There is something about a community's library that tells you about everything you need to know about that community. Its vibrancy can tell you if this is a place that is stuck in the past or if it is a place that is really looking to the future. So our new library, I believe, will benefit the entire community right from this front door, back door, <laughs> side door, clear to the farthest edges of the county line. Our library is almost half a century old and it's over capacity. That much is clear just from standing here today. Building a new, up-to-date, and expanded public library will help our kids learn. Hey, we're hey here. guys, we are back. We are here with Forrest and Christian, and they're on the Hellgate Roller Derby organization. So they're not on the Hellgate Roller Girls team, but they're on the co-ed team. And so they're here to tell us all about that. So you guys, what's it like to be playing pretty much an all-female sport as dudes? Like, I feel like you've got to be pretty intimidated. I would be. It's definitely intimidating. Um, you know, our most, my background is, is refereeing, and so I'm used to kind of hanging out on the outside or uh, away from the action, and so this will be um, my first time playing with Hellgate on the track um, and being involved in the action instead of an observer. Sweet. And, and you guys have been working with uh, the Roller Girls in their practices and working on this big co-ed event that's happening this Saturday. Yeah, so as much as we can, <laughs> yeah. we have, I mean, we definitely don't have as much experience as I think any of the girls on the team, um, but yeah. we've been practicing as much as we can and getting ready and it's going to be a lot of fun. That's awesome. And so are you, do you have a referee background too? Or? Yeah, I, I moved, when I moved here, I started refereeing. Uh, uh -huh. Landon taught me everything I know here. And um, then eventually I transitioned into coaching this year. So I am coaching the women's team with one other person right now and also skating on the co-ed team. Cool. Yeah. That's awesome. And so... What does it take to be a roller derby? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> time. time. <laughs> skating skills initially are optional. Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't have any skating skills when I started refereeing. Um, you know, they, they, we will teach you how to skate. Um, if you come with skating skills, even if it's even if it's hockey, like uh, ice skating or rollerblading, like that helps. Um, some kind of coordination helps, but it's not mandatory. I had none. It's still arguable will I have it, whether yeah. I have any. Yeah. yeah, it's definitely time and skating skills and then like openness, I guess. Uh -huh. It's a really like accepting community, like all different types of people, like whoever you are, uh, there's definitely a place for you within the Hellgate Roller Derby. Definitely. Yeah. That's uh, awesome. Awesome. I was talking to you guys earlier and you guys were talking about like there are a couple of male leagues in a, in a, in a, across across the United States. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a few male, male leagues that are gearing up and getting going. So uh, what does it take for uh, like all male league to get started? I think a big part of it is a lot of support from the female league. Mm -hmm. um, every every men's derby league that I can think of has the the support and the the pushing from a women's league, uh, and they you know they're usually kind of brother sister kind of deal. They all get along and do stuff together um, because the there's just not the the infrastructure for men's derby without the infrastructure for women's derby. Um, that makes sense. So they really go hand in hand. Yeah, and so what do you think are some of your strengths and weaknesses as being like men coming into this women's league? You know, what do you have over the girls or what do you have that the girls have over you guys? Um, I, you know, it's speaking in terms of what we have over the girls, like I, I, I can't think of anything as of right now. Um, for the two of us, I think maybe a, 
good understanding of the rules okay. um, yeah. and like how to play the sport um, according to the rules, but I think overall experience is one thing that all of the women have over us and um, just like knowledge of how to use their bodies to like destroy another person. Yeah, yeah, no, they're tough. Like, I'm scared for sure. I don't, I don't think yeah. I'm tough enough to be a roller girl. That's definitely something that's hard to learn is, yeah. is how to use your body in, you know, you know the, the legal ways, and that's something they all have, you know, mm -hmm. most of them have years of experience, and we're just sort of starting to figure it yeah. out, so. It's a very, um, very different. We're probably going to look kind of clumsy out there. I'm excited for you guys. This is going to be awesome. So let's talk about the event that's coming up. Yeah. What can people expect um, this Saturday? So around 6, 5.30, 6 o'clock, we'll have our juniors bout. So they're going to be playing against the Great Falls team. Um, and that's ages 12 to 18. Yep. 12 to 18. And so they'll be skating first. And then around 7.30, we'll get on the track. Um, and we're going to be playing against a pickup team from kind of the Pacific Northwest, mostly Seattle, called the Co-Dead. Um, so we'll be playing against the Co-Ed team as well. <coughs> Cool. Nice. And yeah. is it just you guys? Are there more males on the team? There's two other men on the Hellgate team. Cool. Um, both also referees, so we all kind of have the referee background. Mm -hmm. um, we don't currently have any dedicated male skaters. Um, we're looking. Mm -hmm. Hellgate, uh, you know, has been looking for a while. Um, so if there's any dudes out there interested in skating with Hellgate, we're definitely, definitely looking. And so, if there are, where can people get in contact with you guys? Um, yeah, on our website, uh, hellgaterollergirls.org, or on Facebook. Um, we respond to messages pretty quickly on Facebook. Uh, we have our practices, so we have a fresh meat practice on Monday and Thursday. On Monday, I believe it goes from like 6.30 to, or 6 to 9, um, so we kind of like have a three-step practice, and then on Thursday, it's maybe from 7.30 to 9.30, I'm not 100% sure on the times, but we do have a schedule on our website, and any of those fresh meat practices, people are welcome to just show up and we'll see if we can fit them with skates from our borrow bin. And, and we take people, uh, you know, we like uh, Christian said earlier, we are looking for people um, who want to be involved in Derby in any aspect. You know, we have off skates officiating, uh, on skates officiating, on skates playing. Um, yeah, there's a place for everybody nice. all the way down to, to 12 years old for the junior junior team. Yeah, it, the roller derby seems like it's really awesome community and really accepting and yeah. open. So that's pretty awesome. Nice. It is. Nice. Is there anything else you want to say? Come out on Saturday. Yeah, it's going to be a blast. Tomorrow. All right. We're yeah. going to have a lot of fun. Awesome. Well, thanks, you guys. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be right back after this. No matter what you're planning, If you plan to drink, plan to have a friend get you home. Get ride home ideas and tools at plantolive.mt.gov. Birthdays come and go, each year adding up to a lifetime full of extraordinary moments. At Missoula Aging Services, we promote the independence, dignity, and health of older adults. We are ready to help connect seniors to the help they need. Knowing you've got friends to support you, each birthday can be special. See how we can help. Call 728-7682 or log on to MissoulaAgingServices.org. Hi you guys, we are back and I've got some community events for you for your Friday. So today is First Friday, so what I've got for you are your First Friday events as well as some music. So. Starting, we're starting at noon today. We're starting at noon over at the Missoula Public Library for our watercolor painting class with our homeboy, Rob P. Uh, that is from noon until two. And then over at the Missoula Art Museum is our first Friday, and it's our first first Friday event uh, with Karen Shimoda. It starts at five and it's until eight. And so uh, she took daily walks after her move to Portland to learn of the flora of the unfamiliar forest. So she took notes and made observations which worked their way to our art practice and are on display in a solo exhibit titled Field Notes. 
Uh, okay, so this one is pretty cool. So uh, the Zach and other North Side West Side galleries are doing a First Friday bike challenge. So uh, you can commute commute between the galleries on the north side and the west side of Missoula and have a passport, which will be provided at uh, the participating venues. And so they'll stamp it, and then you return your full passport to the Clay Studio of Missoula to win prizes. Um, and so along the way, you have to look for stickers and different stamps that you have to get to fill up your passport. And so at 9 o'clock is when they're going to be doing the grand prize drawing over at the Clay Studio. Um, over at Adventure Cycling, they're having a bike travel photography by Tom Robertson. And so they've got, you know, they finally renovated their space on Pine Street. They've been doing that for a while. So uh, there's wine and snacks, and you can go on the visual journey of the most spectacular places in the world to cycle. Over in uh, the Gallery 709 inside of Montana Art and Framing over on Ronan Street, off of 6th Street. Uh, salt mine artists, innovative and diverse new works. And so it's featuring the salt mine artist Grain of Salt. And so it's uh, surrealist paintings, interactive sculpture, mixed media works, drawing, and printmaking. And so the salt mine artist is a collective group of artists. Over at Betty's Divine, they've got a wild mountain ink art show. And so it'll be feature pen and ink drawings and high, fi high fire ceramic jewelry of Haley Schofield. Cool. <coughs> Uh, over at the artist shop is Birdfest 2016 Multimedia and Artist Avian Art. So it's a multimedia show featuring a group of artists including Kate Davis, uh, Julie Chapman, and Sarah McLaughlin, and members of the artist shop. Go cool, it runs through the month of June. Uh, over at E3 Convergence Gallery is called Reflections. It's a juried group exhibit that starts at 5. Um, and so they asked artists to respond to the theme Reflections. And the results are an amazing lineup of 22 artists with a beautiful variety of 50 artworks, plus some poetry. Uh, Claire, Claire Emery, she's a local artist around Missoula. She has her first Friday opening and party. She just opened up an art studio. It's located at 223 West Railroad Street. And so she's got an open house party and she's got art. And so she'll have appetizers, beverages, music, friends and community. So it starts at five. Uh, over at Gecko Designs, they've got an art reception for Richard K. Kasdan uh, also starts at 5 and is bringing in his Holy Moly Moments photography collection. So it'll contain photos from uh, his Holy Moly Mountain Moments, eclectic Mount Rainier images, Holy Moly Global Moments, globals, uh, photos from his global travels. Wow. And then, I know. <laughs> There's so much global in that. Nature <laughs> Moments, which is a dance of light, highlights of his unique perspective and natural beauty seen in the Pacific Northwest. Cool. So it'll be like a little collection of his Holy Moly photos. Yeah, me and the third Moly. Yeah, I had myself at the third Moly too. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, didn't you get chased at a gecko design once? Me? Yeah. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you got chased out because you were taking pictures. It was not at Gecko Designs. Oh, it wasn't? Okay, then never mind. Yeah, no, I did not. <laughs> Okay. I've been chased out of plenty of places. <laughs> Get out of here, kid. It's like, <laughs> I just want to hang out. <laughs> Over at Bathing Beauty's Beads, they've got a bead, they've got a uh, jewelry show, you know, art show, but it's featuring jewelry. It's called Bridging the Gap. We're all wild, but it's Antonia Wolf. And so it's jewelry making that I grew out of her work as a photographer. And on photography assignment, she collected stones and beads from countries around the world and now makes jewelry out of it. Over at the Clay Studio in Missoula, they've got a grand reopening re celebration and reception. Starts at 5:30. Uh, so they're, it's a reopening of their uh, remodeled exhibition and sales gallery area. So you can view small works from a big state, featuring small scale works from nearly five dozen ceramic artists from the state of Montana. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, over at Fact and Fiction, there is going to be a reading and signing by Christine Carbo. It's her book called Mortal Fall. Um, and it's pretty much about a wildlife biologist whose body is found at the base of a ravine, and then an investigator who's on the case, um, but has no idea of the glorious, uh, terrifying wilderness surrounding him. More to fall. Yeah. Coming soon. So I'm pretty sure. Him. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's just about this guy. He like falls, and this other guy investigates it. But it sounds pretty cool. <laughs> so she'll be there reading and signing her book. <laughs> but these stab wounds don't make sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. 
You'll find out more if you go. <laughs> oh, he fell on Stabby Rock. <laughs> that rock stabs you about five times before it lets you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a great And then there's um, uh, Shiv Peak. Mm -hmm. It shivs you pretty good. Yep, yep. <laughs> Shake Peak. <laughs> oh, the or Shiv. <laughs> Shiv Peak. Shiv there's peak. so many different slang terms for something that can stab you. Shiv Peak sounds a little more exotic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, we're moving on. Yes. Uh, over at Frame of Mind, they've got a First Friday Wildland Fire United Globally. And so uh, the Frame of Mind Art Gallery will be featuring a new poster painting and original studies that led up to the creation of the poster created for the United Global Wildland Fire Community. But I don't have a picture of that and I haven't seen it, so sorry you guys. <laughs> Go check it out! <laughs> and we've got some music! Uh, John Floridas will be at Imagination Brewing Company at 6. The Dodgy Mountain Men will be behind the Old Post at 6 o'clock. Uh, there's a First Friday at the Hive that also starts at 6. It's the Lizzie Juwada Arts and Culture Center, Missoula. Uh, I don't know what that is, but there's a, a group show and there'll be paintings. Nice. Yeah. And then over this place called Sound Healing, it's a 127 North Higgins and it's in the basement. Uh, they're doing live body art and a change with vibration jam. So there'll be a singing bowl, drum and acoustic jam, and then they'll be having live body art. Cool. All right, and we've got some more music. The Wiz Pops is uh, releasing their album, Beach Party. They're gonna be at the Wilma Theater at six. The Ruins is playing at Faruqi's at six o'clock. Larry Hirschberg will be at Ted's Food Vineyard and Winery also at six. There'll be traditional Irish music at the Union Club at 6 p.m. Um, and then over at the Missoula Art Museum uh, will be the art guide training. So they've got the show from Karen Shimoda and she'll have like a lecture and now she'll have the training. As you can uh, go, uh, you can have more information on becoming an art guide. So it'll be art guide training. That's cool. Uh, and then over at the Roxy Theater is a quantum activist documentary that starts at 7 p.m. Uh, and then Camp Days is happening this weekend. This is a little music festival that's happening at all the bars around Missoula. So they'll be at the VFW tonight at 9 p.m. Starting at 9.30 will be New Old Future. At 10.15 will be Modern Sons. 11 o'clock will feature Vasis. 11.45 will be Iron Eyes. And 12.30 will be Gold Leather. And then they'll also be at the Palace starting at 9. Uh, from at 9 will be Sunraiser. 9.40 will be Holy Totem. 9.20 will be Mon let's see, Mono Turneris. Uh, 11 o'clock will be Pist House. I don't know how to say that. Uh, Pist and then 11 oh, Pisca House. Pisca House, okay. And then 11.40 will be Panther Car. And then at 12.20 will be Western Daughter. Mm -hmm. And at 1 a.m. will be Terror Pigeon. Yeah. <laughs> Hide your Eastern western daughters yep. from the eastern ones. So Union Club will have a Cash for Junkers at 9.30. Trouble Sum will be at the Sunrise Saloon at 9.30. The Bent Bones and Travis Yost will be at the Stage 112 at 10. And then Los Lonely Boys will be at Top Hat Lounge also at 10 o'clock. That's what's going on in your community. Uh, look at MissoulaEvents.net, University of Montana website, The Independent, and The Missoulian for more events. But now we are going over to Asaph Adonai for Musical Notes. That's how I wanted to start this segment off. If it were possible to marry a cartoon character, our guest would probably be the ultimate male fantasy. She is <laughs> sultry, she is moral, she's a cartoon singer at the Los Angeles Supper Club called the Ink and Paint Club. The most beautiful female human tune known to the world is Jessica Rabbit. <laughs> and there she is. Anyway, she is married to cartoon star Roger Rabbit, and um, she is known for her iconic role, I'm not bad, I'm just drawn that way. <laughs> I just love that line. Jessica deeply loves her husband, and when Detective Eddie Valiant says, seriously, what do you see in that guy? She says, he makes me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um... Jessica Rabbit, she is a fictional character called uh, in, a, in a play called Who Censored Roger Rabbit? And then the film adaptation was Who Framed Roger Rabbit? And um, she's renowned, obviously, as a sex symbol in animation for her beauty. 
Who Framed Roger Rabbit was written by Gary K. Wolf, writer, and it's based on Little Red Riding Hood, actually. And um, the synopsis of the show, there she is at the Ink and Paint Club singing. The synopsis basically, in short, her husband gets framed for murder because Judge Doom owns a company called Cloverleaf who buys the red car and puts everybody out of business. And the reason he buys the red car is because he wants to destroy Toontown and he also wants to build a freeway. So Judge Doom frames Roger Rabbit for murder by killing the owner of the red car, Marvin Acme. And so Jessica and the detective here have to solve the murder. And throughout that solving of the murder, um, they, had, they get in all these crazy episodes, like that scene when he's falling out of the sky the reason that happened is because when he was looking for Jessica, everybody believed Jessica did the murder, but she didn't. So what he does is he sees this beautiful woman up on the second floor, and she had this really nice form. And so when he goes to arrest her, it was this homely weasel lady. She goes, a man! And she starts <laughs> making these kissing sounds. And she goes after him and causes him to fall off the edge of the building. So that's why he's falling for his life. And then she ends up saving him. And he gets away from her and ends up solving the crime. So that's kind of a basic synopsis of the movie. And finally, Jessica was selected by Empire Magazine as one of the 100 greatest movie characters of all time. She's also ranked number six as the number six greatest animation cartoon. There she is with her hubby, Roger. And um, this movie has won four Academy Awards including a 199 uh, I'm sorry a 1988 special achievement Oscar. So for those who haven't seen the movie, I would highly recommend it. It's just a fun who done it movie cool. with Jessica trying to defend her husband Roger. Mm -hmm. And I'll quit right there. Nice. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Asa. Sure. That was musical also with Asa Fan and I. And I actually do not have Saturday events for you guys, but if you want to look up Saturday events, like I said, you can go to MissoulaEvents.net. Mm -hmm. That's usually where they list everything. And I believe it's a continuation of Camp Days, um, yeah, you know, Farmer's you, Markets. Yep, we've got a Farmer's Market, Camp Days, there's 5K. You know, I'm sure there's lots of outside activities going on. It's supposed to be beautiful this weekend, so just get out there, you guys. No, but yeah. what I'm looking forward to, a Monday show, where uh, we continue our brand new segment, um, Tales from the Weekend. We don't have our show on Monday. Oh, yes. Actually, so yeah, you guys, Wake Up Missoula is not on the air next week. Scott and I and ASAP have decided to take a break yes. because just for a week, because you know like we've done this three days a week, uh, every week for about for two while. years. Yeah, so we deserve a break too. Mm -hmm. So you can catch us back again a week after that. And so then of course weeks. we're taking a week off in July, during like the last week of July. But of course the, it's summer, you know, mm -hmm. a couple weeks off here and there, um, and then we will be um, gearing back on June thirteenth. It's Monday, June 13th, yep. and you can check us out. And of course, um, this flagship Friday, this video will hopefully tide you guys over for the next two, three weeks. Yep. So without further ado, here is um, flagship Friday video of the week, The Sink Trill. Water. No! None shall touch my precious. Just touch my water button. What's your problem? What, my voice? It's nothing. I just get about trust out when people try drinking from my water fountain. That's not fair. You can't own a water fountain. Yeah, and we're thirsty. I was thirsty once. That's a terrible excuse. We're gonna find another water fountain. Ha! Have fun finding one that works! Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah! Uh. One! One water fountain that works! Ah, ah, ah! I'm so thirsty. Wait a I've been sitting here for three and a half years. You must be thinking about my dirty, no good twin brother. 
Well, can I have a drink? Not anyone. No, no, not no, not how. Fine. And don't ever come back. Hey, what are you doing? Get away. I said. Well, then can I get a drink from your fountain? No. The end. <laughs> Thanks for joining I didn't us. expect that to end so quickly. <laughs> it ends abruptly. That's really funny. <laughs> oh, what a mean water troll. Yeah, mean, terrible water troll. Oh, very nice guy. Nice. Yeah. But of course, you can find out um, all your water troll needs by logging on to our website, <laughs> wakeupmissoula.wix.com slash wakeupmissoula. You can see past videos, past Flagship Friday, past interviews, um, uh, uh, our uh, stop Saturday drop-in video. Of course, we'll probably have to change that this summer yeah. as well to more uh, uh, gearing towards other things as well. But of course, you can like us on Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. I was zoning out. Missoula Community Access Television also has a Twitter at MCAT TV Missoula. You can like us on Facebook and to find out more information, go to MCAT.org. And of course, if you have an uh, um, if you have an upcoming event, cause a rally, band, concert, whatever, you can come on our show and advertise it. Um, you can call us at 542-6228, otherwise known as 542-MCAT. You can also email us mcat at mcat.org. And of course, you can get in contact with any of those social media network websites, Twitter, Facebook, all that great stuff. Yep. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a great resource, uh, and we want to provide it to the community. But of course, we have our next week off, so um, we'll basically, see you again. Yeah, we'll yeah. see you in like Two a weeks. week or so. Two weeks. Yeah, two weeks. Yeah. Have a great day, everyone. And uh, yeah, have a good week. And we'll for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. I'm Noel McAvoy. Here's ASAP Adonai. Mm -hmm.